celebrity church accused of wage abuse and forced tithing, forced donating. A celebrity megachurch in Seattle called Church Home. I think it's a play on words of like church and home being combined. I don't know how to pronounce it. Church Home is in hot water after an ex-employee filed a lawsuit accusing the organization of wage and hour abuse. But the big question is, why is a church, especially a celebrity mega church with members like Justin Bieber and XC Hawks quarterback Russell Wilson facing such serious allegations? The lawsuit claims that Church Home forced its employees to donate 10% of their gross monthly wages back to the organization as a tithe or face being disciplined or even terminated. The suit alleges that the policy violates Washington State's Consumer Protection Act and other labor laws. Although the Church Home Church declined interview requests, it has issued a statement that defended the tithing as quote, the worshipful worshipful act of paying the first 10% of our income to God. This, this is, okay, Ormond, pay attention to this. This is crazy. The statement also added that while the church does not deduct tithe from its employees' paychecks, it asks them to live out this practice. Quote, the First Amendment protects a church's right to restrict employment to those employees who choose to abide by church teachings. The church home intends to vigorously defend the rights of all religious institutions to live, teach, and model their faith through their employees. Explain. This is so wild to me. So they're saying... Okay, as a religious institution, we get to dictate who we hire and we dictate who we hire based on like a statement of faith and and the standards that we have for our employees. And we ask our employees to live out our statement of faith, right? And their statement of faith says it's within their hiring policy. The employees have to tithe, donate, 10%, the first 10% of their gross monthly income back to the organization. Hmm. Hmm. And so this person is saying, you can't force me to pay my employer. I cannot Hmm. have punishment (laughs) at my job for refusing to pay my job back. What? Only because you're a religious institution do you say that this is acceptable. Yeah. And the church is saying it is our First Amendment right to demand that our employees give back 10% of their paycheck to us. Why do we say that this is a First Amendment right? Because we say that this is a religious practice and that mm-hmm. as a religious practice, we demand that our employees of our religious organization follow our professions of faith. Therefore, it is our constitutional right to demand that you give us back 10% of your income or face disciplinary what actions. If, How crazy what is the, that? Right. So why do these people keep working there? Just leave. Well, she she did. <laughs> this woman did. And she... Is she, the, she mm. This is so bad. This woman... She worked in their um, like AV department. She didn't know that this was part of their company policy when she was hired around 2019. And she started to face pressure and discipline in her workforce because she couldn't give the 10% because she had a car accident. Wow. That like deeply impacted her life, right? And her ability to, she was like struggling. She was struggling because of the consequences Mm -hmm. of a car accident. And they start to pressure her and discipline her for not giving her money back to the church when she's trying to, yeah, you know, take care of herself through a difficult time. It, it's so morally unconscionable to me. Yes. Morally, yes. Legally, does she have a chance? She filed a lawsuit. So... No, I mean, I'm no lawyer. I don't know the standards of law within this area at all. I don't know how, um, what are the chances of success in um, 
this situation. I wonder if maybe she could take on um, a more larger civil society representation like the ACLU. This seems like potentially a good case for the ACLU, although I do have mixed feelings about them nowadays. But um, because right now, I think she's just being represented by a local firm. But this this could have very serious implications if this goes, I mean, the lawsuit hasn't even gone to court yet, right? But imagine if this does go to court and then it gets turned up to like the Supreme Court, which if it did happen, that would happen years from now. But think about the consequences of something like this. If it becomes standard to say, yes, churches can force you as part of their religious freedom to give back your income to the organization that employs you because it is mandated as part of their religious practice. Isn't that, it's isn't an that insane just thing. Same, but isn't that just the same as paying less? Just be like, just pay them less, you know? I mean, yes. That, huh. Except yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it's not the same as paying them less because if you were just paying them less, then that's just one transaction, right? But this is, right. no, we are going to create a culture within our organization where if you are not on board with actively going through the process mm -hmm. of giving us back your tithe, you can mm -hmm. be punished for it in your employment and in your career. Yes. Oh, you screwed, you're screwing them with taxes too, aren't you? Because you're increasing their income and then taking it back. And as a charity, you don't pay taxes because that's a donation. Well, it but could be wouldn't they be right off theoretically? Depending yeah, on they could write it off. Yeah, this is off. just this is just paying people less with extra steps. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah, you just you just have the benefit. <laughs> yeah, this is just have the benefit of marketing as if you pay that much, but then you're actually paying ten percent less. And this is so bad because this is like a celebrity mega church, right? And when you look into their financials, their financials are disproportionate. I mean, it is a church, so so of their millions and millions of dollars that they have available to them so much of it comes from donations which means they have a wide network and they have many campuses around the country how much of those millions are being funded by their very own employees right like it's a scam <laughs> yeah. well i mean somebody could argue that no, they're not. I mean, you say it's being they're pressured, but you're not pressured. You could always just not work here. So how do you respond to that? Okay, if this is a policy that is regarded as standard and expected amongst the employees, that needs to be explicitly stated during the hiring process. This woman didn't know that this was part of the terms of employment when she signed on. Yes. And only when but she started not, to face a hostile work environment did she become aware that this is company policy. That's a good so you need to have point. informed consent. If you're going to have a policy like this, people need to know what they're signing up for and be like, you know what? I actually I actually agree to that. It's not, it's not, oh yeah, you're right. They have a good case because it's not part of the signed agreement. It's not part of the signed agreement. This is like you signed agreement that you get paid this much and now you're like, I don't know yeah. if it's part of the contract, but it is part of the employee standards. Like yeah, so that's not going to fly. I didn't standards. sign to this. I did not sign to this. You could say, so I think you might, again, no, I'm not a lawyer. Here's, but Armin, in the contract, it probably says, I agree to meet and fulfill the to requirements of the employee standards. Standards. Okay. So that makes it harder. Okay. Yeah. okay. But yeah, Dia okay. saying it's in the fine print. It's in the fine print. Mm. But if this sort of a thing should not be fine print, this should be a verbal expression of an expectation that we have. Yes, yes. As your employee. Yeah. Imagine if you imagine if you could put this in the small print and you know other companies that are not religious should be like, you give us fifty percent. And that was it. Ha, ah, you are in the small print. Like, what are you gonna do now? I know, if you I had been it. working for an organization and then I have a car accident that changes my life and I'm struggling, and then they start badgering me for 10% of my income when I didn't even mm. know that this is part of their practices and actually expectations, I would be, I would be losing my mind. I would leave too. I mean, are you insane? Mm. If you have an expectation that I should be paying you to pay me, you're out of your mind. You need to tell me that from the get go. Mm. I don't know that it just, I, it yeah. blew my mind. The gall, the gall, the gall to say that this is a constitutional right.
and that they will vigorously mm. defend their First Amendment right to live, teach, and model their faith through their employees this way? It's absurd to me. It, it, the, the, it, it's just like the, the, the gall, the balls on these people. Oh, my God. It, am I, like, out of line for thinking this is so crazy? <laughs> No, I like I like how I like how passionate you are about this. this is <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's 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 yeah, it's good to see. Um, okay, yeah, that was that was interesting. <laughs> Joshua Drew is saying America. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.